Tess with the Lehigh Valley Rose Society, and today I'm going to talk about how to plant a potted rose. All of the roses you see here we planted this year as bare roots. However, when we received our box, a couple of our roses were missing their tags. So we potted them up, and now I have salmon sunglaze here ready to plant. The first thing you're going to want to do is decide where you want to plant your roses. Paul Zimmerman suggests that if you want a full hedge look where you can't really see the ground between the roses, you'll want to plant them 20 to 30 inches apart. You'll also want to pay attention to their growth habits. For example, Salmon Sunblaze grows about 18 to 24 inches wide. If on the other hand you would like to be able to work around each rose, you should plant them at least 3 feet apart or more. Now for your hole, you'll want to dig 18 inches in diameter and 18 inches deep. The roots won't necessarily need that much space right away, but it will help with drainage to have the ground less compact around the roots. Now I have my hole dug. I have the original soil here, my fertilizer, and in this bucket I have a mixture of topsoil and compost. The first thing I'm going to want to do is to backfill the hole enough for the rows to be at the correct level. I'm going to be using a lot of this mixture because our soil is mostly heavy clay. The fertilizer I have measured out for this rose is our Lehigh Valley Rose Society Rose Fertilizer, an all-natural and organic fertilizer with a blend of 4-endo and 7-ecto mycorrhizal fungi, which help promote root growth. A bigger root system means the rose is better able to weather environmental extremes absorb water and nutrients. It's available for purchase from our website, linked in the description below. Now at the bottom of the hole, I'm going to sprinkle a bit of fertilizer. And then I will put the rose in. And as I continue to fill in the hole, I will layer these three things. As you are planting the rose, you want to make sure there are not air pockets around the roots. This is not as much of a concern with potted roses as it is with bare roots, but you still want to make sure that all of the roots are touching soil. I gently press down on the soil as I add layers, and I also plant the pot's ground level slightly higher than the ground level of the soil around the hole because it will settle over time and you don't want water to pool around the base of the rose. You'll want the ground slightly sloped away from the base of the rose. While roses like moist soil, their roots don't like to sit in a pool of water. We often hear that we should add compost to improve the soil. This helps feed the microbes that release nutrients and grow better plants. That's why our mixture here is in part garden soil and part compost. Because our yard is heavy in clay, we are a bit heavy handed with compost to help open up the soil structure and get more water and air to plant roots. However, there is a recent study from Oregon State University where my husband is working on a degree in botany and plant pathology. The recommended range for organic matter in soil is three to 5%. After a sampling collected from 27 master gardeners yards, the organic matter averaged 13% well above the recommended level. Interestingly, one of the sites tested at 30%, and all of the plants in that bed burned and died by the end of the season. That gardener admitted to using only compost. 
This ties into the importance of getting your soil tested, referenced in our pH for roses video. And now it's ready for mulch. Adding a layer of mulch around your roses helps to protect them from drying out too quickly in harsh sunlight. We use triple shredded hardwood mulch in our yard, which breaks down and adds nutrients to the soil. Finally, make sure to give it a good heavy watering.